Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here today. Um, my name is Elisabetta Marafiotti, and uh, I will uh, uh, basically uh, organize uh, and, and lead uh, this session this afternoon that is dedicated, as you can see from uh, uh, the slide behind me, to the International Master Program in Entrepreneurship. Um, we are now also uh, streaming this, uh, this presentation and therefore I would like also to welcome everybody that is connecting from uh, all over the world, we hope. Um, and um, uh, the idea behind this uh, uh, session that we have decided to organize is first of all to present officially our international master program in entrepreneurship and I will tell you more about this in a while. But then uh, um, we would like also to um, basically uh, share with you our view on uh, how important entrepreneurship is uh, uh, nowadays for uh, our country, but also for uh, Europe in general, uh, um, relying on the direct experience of uh, uh, some guests that we have this afternoon here with, uh, with me uh, that are uh, part of the startup ecosystem. So we thought that it was uh, appropriate uh, to, to share their experience uh, um, just to launch this uh, concept that is uh, uh, at the root of, uh, of our master program. So I would like to briefly introduce you to um, Antonio Dellatti, the project manager from Fabric. Thank you for being here. Um, then we have uh, Mariana Poletti, uh, who is founder and CEO of Just Knock. Then, of course, they will introduce themselves and tell you more about their uh, projects and activity. Uh, then uh, we have also Davide Pizzolu, I hope I pronounced it correctly, managing director, last minute sotto casa. Um, then I would also like to thank other people that are sitting here in this room that are very important for our project and for our master program. Uh, my name is falling. I think it's a sign that something must be fixed or whatever. Now you know who, who I am. Uh, first of all, Benedetta Trivellato, who is uh, together with me uh, working hard on this project. Then we are very lucky today to have here uh, another representative of another partner of our consortium, that is uh, RQ and uh, Carmen Fusilli, who is here. Thank you for, for being here. And then I also would like to thank uh, uh, Ginevra Villa, who is also uh, part of the team uh, here at Bicocca, and he's uh, managing the communication uh, and the relationship with companies, so very precious contribution. And then there are other uh, colleagues uh, here, but uh, I mean, uh, I would like uh, to jump directly to uh, the, the main uh, uh, the core uh, point that we are covering today, that is uh, the presentation, the official presentation of, uh, of this program. Uh, so I'm switching to the presentation of uh, okay. Okay, this program, this master program is a very special creature. Uh, I uh, you know that uh, here in uh, Bicocca University and in all the other universities that partner in this project, uh, there is a broad offer of master programs. But this program is the result of uh, um, basically uh, a project that has been, uh, that received financing from uh, the European uh, Union and in particular within the um, Erasmus Plus uh, Knowledge Alliance uh, project. Um, what is the idea behind this financing? The idea behind this financing is to promote entrepreneurship uh, in Europe. And so basically, uh, the, the, the European Union selected the number of uh, uh, consortia that are now uh, trying to promote entrepreneurship in different fields uh, uh, throughout Europe. And we were selected among these. I can tell you that there are about, uh, at the moment, 30 projects that are financed in the last uh, three, four years about that. And of course, uh, within this project, and I will tell you a little bit more about this project in a minute, um, 
the main product that uh, is, uh, is uh, financed by, by the project is a master program that uh, uh, basically is aimed at uh, uh, supporting and uh, uh, promoting entrepreneurship. Uh, the idea behind this master is really to create uh, new enterprises that then will uh, uh, create uh, economic growth and uh, new jobs uh, in, the, in the European Union where we are. Um, the main players of this uh, master program are the four universities as you find in this slide. So it's uh, uh, for Italy, University of Milan Bicocca. Then we have a Greek partner that is University of Tessali. And then we have uh, uh, Agaelia uh, from Finland and uh, FH Ioanneum from Austria. These are the four university partners that are basically uh, now uh, participating to uh, this um, master program directly because, of course, they have uh, um, the, 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 the skill and competences to build this uh, program together. And this program is, uh, uh, has been uh, jointly developed by, by us uh, together with uh, all the other partners that are part of this consortium. Uh, what is interesting in this consortium is that uh, we have uh, as you know, a, a number of academic partners. I already uh, introduced you to them. But we also have some um, partners that are instead coming from the business. And they mm, very often are also startups themselves. And they come also from different countries in the world because we have partners from the UK, uh, we have partners from, uh, um, from uh, Portugal, we have partners from Bulgaria, we have partners from Romania, uh, we have partners from uh, Belgium, and as you can see, we also have, uh, as a supporting partner, the European crowdfunding network, because uh, it's uh, basically uh, very often crowdfunding is used as a tool to support startups in their development. And uh, you also see that uh, in this uh, partnership, we also have Stanford University. Stanford University is, uh, we could define it as a sort of uh, um, technical partners because basically they, are, they have supported us in designing this program, taking inspiration from their way of supporting startups. You know that Stanford and uh, in general, the, 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 the Silicon Valley area has been, uh, is considered one of the most uh, 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 fruitful areas to start up a company and uh, we uh, uh, spend time trying to collaborate with them and trying to understand how we could and if we could replicate uh, uh, that model in, uh, in Europe because you know that the ecosystem and the environment in Europe is, is completely different. So I gave you some background information because I, it's important to tell you how complex uh, and how structured is the work behind designing this type of program, that's very important. And then also because, uh, and this, uh, this is also the main advantage, since we are launching in 2018 this master for the first edition uh, with the support of this uh, program, we are launching this for first edition uh, without applying any fee to our students. That's uh, an immediate benefit that you can get from this type of financing. So, um, going to the Important thing, okay, today you see me, uh, that I'm representing uh, uh, Italy, but then we also have uh, a team uh, of, uh, uh, of other people like me that are basically the, 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 responsi the, 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 res the person responsible for the master program in the different universities, just to let you know who they are and see their face. Face-to-face uh, -face interaction is very important when you when you do business and you when you start up, and so this is why we, we want to use face uh, to 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 get in touch with you. Okay, what is the vision behind this master program? Uh, this is something that we developed uh, uh, during a very intense workshop we did in Stanford, and this is the idea behind this uh, this uh, master program. So we want our graduates to think big, build collaboration, and make it happen. Uh, what is very important is that we are not looking for students who are willing to get uh, um, a culture of entrepreneurship. One of the goals of the project uh, that uh, has been financed by the European Union is also to build culture. But we also want to really uh, 
create uh, and give uh, all the skills that are important to, um, uh, uh, to, to start uh, a new company. So create, uh, uh, and, and in, in basically uh, create this, the seeds that then can generate something that will, uh, will really contribute uh, to the uh, starting up of new companies. So uh, for us, making it happen is very, very important. So someone could say, okay, but I don't have any business idea. I don't know why I should register, I, I should apply for this master program. Well, um, the idea that we have in this master is that uh, you need uh, entrepreneurs who have ideas, but you need also people that are willing to participate to the startup of a company. So we are selecting people that uh, maybe have some idea, would like to be entrepreneurs themselves, but also people that would like to join a team of uh, uh, somebody who has a good idea and are willing to you know, bet on uh, doing something new and maybe making suc very successful worldwide. There are a lot of startups that we know now that were maybe created four or five years ago from nothing. So this is, uh, I think, a challenge that we should try to, uh, to take. Um, it's clear that uh, we, uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, uh, potential entrepreneurs uh, we want to build, uh, I mean, uh, give our students uh, the, the right skills to build uh, what is called the entrepreneurial spirit. So we are working a lot on uh, doing things rather than uh, uh, studying theories and models. You will see how the program is structured. We have a pretty intense uh, a program where we are really leading you through a process that will allow you to and the program, pitching your idea and being able to start really something and finding someone who can believe in your ability to build uh, a new company. And of course, uh, we are also within the project willing to support you in your activity. Um, the program, the project, sorry, that has been financed by the European Union has the program, the master program as the main product, but it's not the only one product. We, have, uh, we are also building a platform that basically is putting all the stakeholders of the um, ecosystem together. And the idea is that uh, throughout the program, you will be exposed to this ecosystem with the idea of exchanging continuously idea and supporting you in the development of uh, activities. Um, I just told you that one of our partners is the European crowdfunding network that in fact is supporting crowdfunding campaigns by startup and so just to give an example but there are other players that are involved in that and that will be able to, to, to support you. And then uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a challenge, I know, but we believe that with the team that we have created and also with the, with the quality of the students that will, uh, will apply to this program, we'll be able to, to deliver results that will be very useful for the whole European Union, I would say. Now, um, in terms of, um, this is a, a very complex way to present the content of the program, but I would like just to um, draw your attention on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, on, uh, on the left side, uh, you have uh, the list of the, of the studies, uh, of the modules that we are offering, that basically are covering, but I will give uh, you more details on that in the next slide, are covering uh, the uh, step by step, the main skills that you need uh, to build uh, uh, your concept and to make it happen, as I was saying at the very beginning. Um, the, the master, uh, since uh, the main goal that we have is to make it happen, will be a, a master program where every activity will be linked to developing your project. And therefore, you will be always evaluated on uh, uh, activities that you will do that are linked to the final pitching of, uh, of your idea and the preparation of a business plan for um, um, to present your idea in a proper way, 
um, and then uh, uh, building step by step uh, with, a, with a series of activities. The uh, approach that we are using to develop this, uh, uh, this, uh, this path is uh, the design thinking approach. This is uh, really the key learning that we got from, uh, from Stanford. Design thinking has to do with uh, basically learning by doing. Um, probably uh, in Europe we are we tend to be very theoretical in the way we approach things. We try, to, we make a lot of analysis, we write a lot of paper saying, trying to estimate what will be the impact of our activity or whatever. And uh, at a certain point of time, when it's time to approach the market and create our product, probably it's, uh, it's late, we are very slow and so. Uh, what they do in the United States and in Stanford and Silicon Valley, adopting a design thinking approach, is to start immediately from the market. So the, what they do is we have an idea and we go and test it before then making any type of analysis and so on and so forth. This idea of um, transforming uh, a program like this into a lab where you are continuously in contact with uh, uh, your customers and potential customers and, and, and all the, uh, the, the, the possible uh, players and actors that could give you feedbacks useful for developing your, your, your project. Um, another element that I would like also to point out before entering into details of the program um, is uh, what you see on the right side of the slide, specialization studies and soft skills. Um, we, we, we aim at creating startuppers, uh, and of course this is already a challenge, but the, the program is also focusing on a series of areas that you see listed in the specialization studies that uh, uh, we consider as uh, particularly promising. So these are, let's say, the topics that will be the main focus of, uh, of, our, of our master program. Um, and then uh, we, we have a, a series of uh, soft skills that we want to develop in, uh, in our uh, students that are very important because uh, as a startup, we, you will have to deal with people, you will have to motivate people because as I said at the beginning, uh, an entrepreneur believes, strongly believes in his idea. But then if you want to win, you need, you need to create a team that believes as you in the idea, even if uh, results will not arrive uh, uh, immediately. So you, you have to develop skills that are, you know, uh, uh, creating and building a team that must be even stronger than uh, uh, in, any, in any company, uh, in any existing company. We were discussing about this in a minute ago because you need really to, 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 to be uh, able to, to deliver creativity, to, to have managerial skills, to cre create empathy. And so this is something that we are also uh, trying to build in, in the program. How are we going to do it? This is uh, the student journey. So your journey, if you're interested in uh, starting this program. Uh, the journey will start in uh, November. The selection process that we are using with this program is slightly different from the one that we probably you are used to. Because we will, uh, of course, select uh, the candidates on the base of, uh, of uh, your CV. Um, I'll tell you later what are the criteria that we will apply. But then the final selection will happen in November during uh, what we call open day, but in reality it's a workshop where we want to see you interacting with the, with the other candidates and sharing your ideas, if you already have any, and presenting yourself uh, as either entrepreneurs or member of uh, potential contributors to a, to a startup. And uh, uh, after that workshop, we'll, uh, we'll uh, basically select who will uh, actually be part of this game. This is very important because um, anytime you start uh, a new adventure, you want to choose uh, uh, who will come with you and who will be your partner in that. And so we thought that this way of uh, 
getting uh, uh, exposure also to this uh, uh, interpersonal uh, uh, way of, uh, of acting is, is, a, is a value added. And you will see that uh, uh, this uh, initial workshop is already part of your training program because you will start uh, with the uh, first pillars of design thinking. Um, then, uh, okay, the start, the, the, the official start of, uh, of the exam, of the, of the uh, master program will be January 11th, okay? And uh, this program is, uh, as you know, an international program with uh, students coming from all over Europe, even if uh, we already received applications and they are coming from all over the world. Um, and uh, they will uh, uh, attend the first three weeks of uh, classes, of lectures here in Milano. Um, the, the, this means that uh, they will attend classes on design thinking, team building, then they will uh, uh, learn how to develop an instant business plan and how to develop a market analysis. Uh, after this uh, uh, initial uh, module that will, be, uh, will take place here in Milano, the rest of the program will be delocalized. So some classes will be offered here in Italy in the um, University of Milan Bicocca, others in uh, uh, Agaelia University in uh, Helsinki, um, others in, uh, in um, uh, University of Tessali in Greece, and uh, others, other modules in, uh, in uh, university, in um, FG, F, FH Ioanneum in, uh, in Austria. Um, what does it mean? It means that uh, those students who have been uh, enrolled uh, uh, in uh, the different uh, university will attend uh, classes in uh, the, the, the headquarters of their university and uh, uh, the others will uh, instead uh, uh, be involved in this program um, through our learning platform because we are using uh, basically uh, distance learning and blended learning as a way to uh, uh, involve and train our students. Consider that uh, um, the mix between uh, activities that are done in class uh, and activities that are instead done by you in groups uh, with your team, because don't forget that we are uh, willing to develop uh, a business concept, uh, will be uh, done uh, wherever you wish. So with a team that will be created at the very beginning by you, with the supervision of um, a professor who will support you in this, uh, and uh, uh, will follow you throughout the program. I'm anticipating one of the questions that we are receiving now, um, if you wish to attend any part of the program in one of the partner universities, you can do that, of course. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, the, this year is not uh, compulsory because basically through the platform you will be, in any case, uh, able to attend classes from all the partner universities without moving from your house, basically. Um, so, uh, the core module of, uh, of this program are those highlighted in blue, building collaboration and growing the business. We will be around uh, April, and by that time you will have to basically uh, start framing a little bit more your business idea. And you see that uh, corresponding to this uh, stage of the development of your business, we have classes like partnership, mem partner creating partnership, uh, financing, fundraising, incubators, accelerators, people management, marketing, branding, communication, testing, attraction, and go to market. So the idea here is uh, that uh, by April you will be able to frame and you will have all the tools to frame your uh, business idea. And then uh, we'll have uh, the so-called elective specialization. Um, you will have the possibility to choose a number of um, seminars that will allow you, depending on your interest, on your area of interest, of course, uh, to go more in depth in the development of your business concept. Okay. Now, 
it's, uh, it's also important to point out that by the end of, um, of, the, of the program that will end in December, you will be able to uh, basically uh, prepare, launch your business idea. And uh, um, this will be something that will be uh, presented publicly. As you can see, uh, the light blue open day, it will be uh, the event uh, that we will organize in Brussels for the closing of the master program and the presentation of your projects. Okay. Uh, I think you noticed that uh, throughout this program there are other uh, moments uh, that are highlighted with the light blue. You have uh, open day, I already mentioned that, and you have mixer one round table, then you have pitching one, then you have mixer two round table, and then of course open day at the end. Uh, what are these events? These are events where Together with the completion of uh, some activities within the master, you will have uh, uh, the possibility to meet uh, different stakeholders of the ecosystem to start socializing your ideas. And you see that throughout the program, we'll have at least uh, three opportunities before the end to, to have this type of exchange. And this is very important. We saw it in... Uh, in the United States because it's important that uh, the relevant uh, stakeholder community uh, becomes aware of what you're doing, knows you, uh, probably pose you also some questions, challenges to your project. So we don't want to do something that is uh, completely outside uh, uh, of the context that uh, you will uh, then experience to start your company. Uh, that's part of the accompanying process that we are using to, to lead you through, through, the, through the process. Um, we, also, we are also developing uh, three learning objects that are very important uh, as, to support your learning process. So you, we have, uh, as I said, uh, activities that are done in class with professors, either physically present where you are or through uh, video conference and webinar. Uh, projects that you're doing with your partners that you will select. And uh, we'll also have uh, three learning tools that will support your learning process. We are developing two apps and uh, a serious game, a business game that, is, that will uh, uh, be used by you during the program uh, to support you, your, your, your process of uh, uh, becoming an entrepreneur, let's say. Um, the first app is a mindful app. Uh, what is very important, uh, and then maybe I will ask also your, uh, our, our guests here to give uh, their point of view on that. Uh, when you start uh, uh, something new, is that uh, uh, it's never, it's not always uh, easy to, 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 to keep the same uh, uh, momentum and determination. Therefore, with the, with the mindfulness app, uh, uh, the idea is that we give you a support uh, uh, psychologically to, to overcome the moment where you could feel uh, disappointed or uh, hopeless or whatever you can feel uh, during this challenge because there will be ups and downs of course uh, in this, uh, in this um, trajectory. Uh, then we are also developing a pitch up that is a, a, a sort of a training lab that you are using to um, practice uh, uh, how you are pitching your business idea. Pitching is very very important if you want to uh, sell your idea in a proper way. And the serious game is uh, something that you will play at the end because we are conceiving the serious game as a sort of lab where you can test in a protected environment your concept and your business idea before uh, launching it officially. And it will be a very powerful learning tool to understand what could be weaknesses, what could be uh, basically fixed uh, in the process, and so on and so forth. Okay, I think I, I, I said many things. I could spend hours on that, but uh, then uh, if you have questions, of course, we will have time for that. One special ingredient of our project is the mentoring program. We, we are 
basically creating a network of mentors. And uh, RQ and uh, Carmen Fusili, who is here, is responsible for this part. Who are mentors? Mentors are people from the business who are willing on a voluntary base to support new companies that are uh, uh, that could 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 start and they are willing to share their experience uh, their uh, yeah everything and give feedback to our students so they will be available for our students throughout the program with this model that you see here so they will organize meetings uh, with our students uh, uh, collective meetings where they share some experience that can be valuable for everybody. Our students will have the possibility to fix appointment, appointment with them. There will be peer-to-peer -peer mentoring between uh, uh, students and uh, students and mentors. Mentors are very important because they can really uh, be those who challenge you, uh, who can uh, be uh, like David's advocate and try to uh, find out weak points of your business model or give you new ideas that you can develop. So this is something that also is very, is very valuable. Uh, it's, uh, and of course, uh, mentoring will happen also among students because uh, sharing experience is also a relevant part of the learning process that you will have throughout the program. Okay, this is the list of the webinars. I'm not spending time on that. You have uh, the list uh, on, the, um, on the website of the, of the program, so you can go there. Uh, okay, here there is a synthesis of uh, some basic information regarding the, the, the program. So it will last, uh, as I said, uh, 12 months. We are using a hybrid model in terms of mix of lectures and uh, activities. Uh, we have uh, uh, plenty of networking events. I said there will be at least uh, three during the program, one at the end and one at the, at the, at the beginning. Um, the assessment method, as I said, uh, we don't have exams. Uh, we don't care about exams. We care about make it happen. So all the, the, the assessment will be based on uh, piece of information or materials that will be relevant for the future development of your, of your business. And then final relevant information, the applications are open since uh, July and will close October the 23rd. And I remind, uh, remind you about the final information that is uh, that this program is offered for, is, uh, for free, so there are no uh, fees applied uh, for the registration to this program for the first year because the pilot of this program is, uh, is um, free of charge. Uh, then, of course, uh, after the second year, it will be continue. It, it will continue as a regular program, so we'll charge uh, the, the the fee that will be uh, applicable to this type of uh, of program. Um, who is the ideal candidate? Someone who has the motivation to become entrepreneur. And when I say entrepreneur, as I said before, I'm not just referring to those who have a good idea and new something, some idea, but also someone who is willing to accept the challenge of uh, working for a startup. Because you need, of course, to, you, you have to, to, to feel it as, a, as an urgency. A bachelor degree, and here you see the number of years uh, is, is indicated because in some countries the requirements are different, and so uh, in the case of Italy, of course, a bachelor degree means that the three years program that we, we know completed. Um, this is the list of, uh, of things that you will be able at the end uh, of, of the program. I'm not going through it because I think I told you many, many things about that. But the idea is that uh, uh, we expect this to, as I said many, many times, to make it happen. And so we expect to uh, uh, help you uh, moving from the theory, the dreams, the desires to the action. That's the main, uh, the main goal, and we do it uh, in, a, uh, as, you, uh, as you probably understood, in a very structured way. Key dates, just, uh, uh, but this is something you also find on the website. The deadline is October 23rd. You, you can apply on the Secretary Online at the beginning of November. 
and then uh, uh, we will uh, uh, publish the admission list uh, at the beginning of November, there will be the, the workshop I was mentioning before. After that, we'll publish the list of the admission, and then you will have to register uh, by the end of uh, November. And uh, the program starts January 11. Here, we already included some frequently asked questions, because as, 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 uh, as I mentioned before, we already received some... some um, uh, registrations and requests. Um, okay, you can find information on this platform that you find here. That's a website uh, of the program where you can find a section also dedicated to the master program. There is also a page on the uh, website of University of Milano Bicocca. Um, internship, uh, well, we are not offering internship in the program. Because the idea is that uh, you should either develop your business idea or contribute to the development of a business idea of uh, another potential entrepreneur in the program. So this is your project, basically. Um, you can, as I already mentioned, uh, spend some time uh, to, to attend courses in uh, one of the partners' university, if you wish. For this pilot phase, for, for this pilot edition, it's not required. Starting from uh, the second edition, it will be, but for this one, it's not. And uh, the last information regarding graduation, we are just selecting students that are graduated when, uh, uh, before the end of November. That's uh, a formal requirement from the university. Uh, I specify this because otherwise you cannot be accepted and, of course, uh, it's better to know it in advance before you, you think that you can do it and then it's not possible for bureaucratic reasons. Okay. Uh, they dis uh, I already mentioned that January uh, we'll have uh, uh, three, two and a half weeks of activities here. Then the rest of the activities will be very flexibly uh, offered uh, uh, throughout Europe, so it will not be face-to-face. Uh, -face. Here you find all the contacts, uh, the social, so if you want to stay in contact with us uh, for now and for the future, you find uh, everything here. We have uh, Facebook, we have Twitter, we have, of course, a proper uh, traditional email account. This is our website for the project. And uh, so if, uh, I don't know if there are questions on that specifically. Well, we, you have time later, yes. Yes, you can. So the question was, if you can apply even if you just graduated, yes. It's, uh, yes, you, the profile is it's matching with. Uh, what, about the, what about the skills in project manager, management? I mean, are there any skills in this master which, are, which regards project management? Yes. Thank this you. is part of, uh, of the training that you will get uh, because, I mean, being a project manager is a very important task if you want to develop uh, uh, your business or if you want to be contribute to the development of the business. So we are also uh, giving you this type of, uh, of skills. Yeah. I didn't mention the fact that, uh, well, maybe you know something about the program that we have here in Bicocca supporting startups, but all the partner university have uh, programs that are supporting startups in their country. So you basically, you will also be part of this network. That's very important. And that's also the reason why we decided to join forces on that. That's something really valuable. Um, the other university that are part of the network, uh, similarly to Vicocca, even if in a different way, because of course the systems are different, are like polytechnic schools where they are engineers. And so we have also, as you know, uh, scientists uh, and a lot of uh, uh, high-tech uh, competencies here, even if it's, uh, Bicocca is not a polytechnic, of course. 
Um, but okay, we are you know also integrating this type of uh, of activities. Other questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, then of course we have time after. Uh, I would like to move to the second part of this uh, of this uh, event today with this uh, round table um, that we decided to structure in the following way. I'm ask, I, I've asked to our guests to give a presentation and explain uh, what is their experience, who they are and so, uh, trying to share with you their perspective on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, challenges, let's say, and uh, um, uh, key learnings from their experience as entrepreneurs or players of, uh, of, the, of the startup ecosystem. And then uh, I would like also to leave some space for discussion at the end. So I would like to start with Antonio Dellatti, who is project manager at Fabric? I'm shifting. Okay. Presentation. Sì, sì, sì. Adesso spengo il mio. Okay, so thanks a lot to Professor Marafiotti. I would start by saying that I'm very jealous of yourselves because when I started my university, there was not a program like that. And uh, if I could go back in the past, I would definitely choose uh, a program like the one that you are starting because basically, and uh, Davide, but I guess, all of us, all of, um, of people that have some experience with incubators or accelerators or training programs in general, uh, well know that most of the modules that will be uh, taught in this uh, program are uh, what uh, we provide in our incubation program and are targeted to startups, to companies uh, which already have a business or at least a business idea. Uh, whereas in your case, uh, it's even better because you may not have a business idea now, but you may think that your future would be uh, the world, the magic world of entrepreneurship. And uh, starting uh, at your age to know uh, all the stuff related to how to build up a startup or a company is very useful because you will anticipate uh, and also you will uh, know some lessons that you will certainly have in the future while you will run uh, your own company. So first of all, uh, congratulations for, uh, for this program that, uh, to, to Bicocca that is going to start uh, and uh, um, now I can start by saying why am and uh, what is Fabric? Um, my name is Antonio Dellatti. I am a project manager of Fabric, uh, or Fabric, or whatever you want to call it. I still have not understood after almost four years. Uh, it's the social innovation incubator of the city of Milan. Um, very strange thing and unusual. Uh, social innovation incubator of the city of Milan means that the city of Milan uh, the end, actually, in 2013, decided to shift a former library and the youth center in the suburbs of Milan, the periphery of Quarto Giaro. People from Milan know uh, at least the name. Um, it's in the northern west. We are in the northeast here. Quarto Giaro is the northwest. And decided to, to shift its mission to a place uh, which could support uh, um, wannabe entrepreneurs, potential entrepreneurs, to run their own business and to facilitate their entry into the market. 
not all kinds of startup. The, the, the focus is on social innovation, and they've also seen that social innovation is in, in the program of the master, which is an innovation which uh, generates not only uh, business uh, and profit uh, revenues, but also social um, social um, effects, uh, positive social effects on a given territory, on a given population, target group. So no matter from no matter what the area of interest it could be sport, it could be culture, it could be smart cities, whatever. The important for us is that linked to their mission, which is common to all companies, which is profit. They also have a social mission, which is to improve the life of people, improve. Uh, the society in general. And uh, it's managed by, Fabric is managed by two private organizations because the city decided from the beginning not to run it uh, by their own, with their own uh, resources, but to let it do to people, to organizations that have already experience in doing it. And uh, that's why it's uh, Fondazione Giacomo Prodolini and Impact Hub Milan uh, are running it since uh, the beginning of 2014, thanks to a public bid that these organizations uh, have won. Uh, I have pre prepared some slides, but I will go very quickly because uh, also to leave floor to the other guests, and I'm also uh, open to your questions. If you have any uh, particular or curious about some particular things, I will going to say. Um, so I already said that uh, we are basically the first incubators promoted by a public authority in Italy, which is specifically targeted at social innovation. Now social innovation is like a buzzword. Everybody talks about social innovation, but uh, just four years ago it was not like that. So uh, in Italy we do some good stuff and the city of Milan I was very um, had a vision on investing in something that was the very beginning, at least in Italy. Um, in particular, the, 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 the service that promotes the city of Milan is uh, the one on uh, economic development and uh, innovation, uh, run led by uh, Councillor Cristina Tajani. This is a short uh, timeline of what we have done in these years. Um, many things. I uh, will go more in detail uh, later on in the slides, but uh, uh, we have incubated uh, almost 40 startups in these years. Startups normally enter into our incubation program uh, through a public call for startups. Um, which uh, provides uh, uh, them uh, three things mainly money, space and training. Money in the form of a grant of up to 25,000 euros. Uh, some years is less, some years is more, but in general it's about 20, 25,000 euros in grant. So we don't ask for equity. We don't ask for shares of the company like most incubators do. Um, space, because Fabric, I will show you some pictures later on, is also uh, space, not only an incubator, 600 square meters with the co-working uh, co -working seats and offices for uh, bigger teams and training. Uh, very similar, as I said before, to the master's program. Uh, it could be from four to nine months. Uh, some, the first one was nine months, but then we saw that it's too much for a startup, to, at least in Italy, to stay nine months following an, a training program. So now they are a little bit smaller, but more intense. Um, other than incubations, we have uh, done some special projects like uh, summer schools uh, for international students and startups, one in 2014 and one in 2015. We work with schools for promoting and educating also young students on entrepreneurship in order to anticipate even more than going to the university what it means to run a business project. Um, we have done specific programs for uh, young students uh, who are not in education, employment and training as NEETS, this is an English acronym. 
which is of course a different target than startups, but still very interesting for uh, uh, giving these people another, um, another uh, idea of their future, which could be also run a small, uh, a small business on their own. Urban regeneration, uh, we, have, uh, we are do some, doing some project with the city of Milan for, uh, um, for the requalification of uh, uh, the peripheries, not only in Quarto Giaro, but also in other uh, areas of, uh, of Milan. Um, there is this year, 2021, which means that Fabric uh, uh, is a project that will continue for sure until 2021, and then, uh, and then we will see. So this incubation training and social innovation are uh, our areas, main areas of focus. Incubation, uh, as, I, as I anticipate, it's very similar to all was mentioned before. It's very interesting also that this part on mentoring and tutorship, because apart from, uh, um, apart from giving classes to people, uh, startupper usually ask for individual support and we do that through a mentor for each startup competent and expert in their fields, either digital or uh, gaming or uh, sports. They have a mentor which has, who has experience on that. We have a lot of networking opportunities with companies, with investors, with other startups. We run events because we know that networking is uh, crucial, especially when a company is about to start and is beginning their, their adventure. And all our incubation programs end with a, an investor day, with a pitch event, uh, where uh, startups uh, um, meet investors uh, in order to uh, raise money for their, for their business. These are some numbers. Um, Till now, we have supported about uh, 40 startups, uh, either in acceleration or pre-acceleration, and they will uh, are were able to raise over 7 million 500 thousand euros of uh, investment, uh, mainly from private investors, uh, venture capital, and business angels. But also, they won awards and prizes, and uh, also other kinds of, of public funding. We do training as well. Um, these are also some results on training, but I would like to stress on Fabric School, which is a new project that we are running. Uh, it's um, a catalog of courses for startups and professionals and wannabe entrepreneurs that will start in October 2017. Applications are still online on our uh, website, and we will start with the three classes, which are which are very important, of course, for a startup, and are digital marketing and communication, uh, legal and startup, and uh, public speaking. These are classes very vertical, where some experienced uh, um, teachers or consultants. Uh, um, are at disposal and available for uh, uh, the tenants for, uh, for example, uh, uh, designing a digital communication strategy, uh, develop a crowdfunding campaign. This for what concerns, of course, the digital marketing class. Um, le uh, teach how to speak in public uh, according to different audiences, clients, investors, uh, uh, staff, uh, because it's important also to have a proper language uh, with staff. And the lawyer will uh, teach uh, uh, attendance uh, on how to open a company, to launch a company, and provide information on uh, privacy and uh, data protection, for instance. Uh, social innovation, very quickly, because it's not really related to business, but it's something we do. Uh, we do special projects. For example, we have supported a startup called Ugo, um, uh, which uh, we help them for a new business model for supporting not self-sufficient people, uh, so people that have problems of mobility and are not... Uh, for them, it's not easy to go, for example, to the hospital or just to go shopping. And we developed a car sharing, a car sharing system 
uh, through which uh, um, some kind of drivers, they call them UGO, uh, are uh, available for uh, not self-sufficient people for, uh, for their uh, basic uh, needs of mobility. Uh, this is just a project, uh, but we do very, um, we do a lot uh, with the support of the city of Milan. These are some pictures of our spaces. As I said before, it's an incubator of six, more than 600 square meters. Uh, we have several rooms and offices, but also some uh, um, external uh, spaces like a garden and uh, a, a football and basketball uh, volleyball court. Just one, but you can do the three of them. Uh, and also shared kitchen, like all the, a lot of co-working and incubators uh, have. Um, we have, of course, a, a big network uh, made of startups, uh, institutions, but also corporates. Uh, we do some projects with corporates, mainly for uh, um, engaging them uh, to getting to know more the innovation and startup ecosystems like Unicredit and PricewaterhouseCoopers. And of course, we are also very linked to some non-profit organizations. Uh, this is mainly a slide for uh, uh, when we go to talk with business, but it's nice to say that we have also some good mediatic visibility. Some months ago, we were uh, in a report uh, um, edition uh, uh, on uh, the requalification of cities, and Fabric was, main, was mentioned as a best practice. So that's it. You can find here some context, uh, con our contacts if you want to ask us something. Thank you very much. I hope I stayed in time. <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dalatti. I think it's, uh, okay, I mean, there are a lot of questions that probably are uh, popping up. I think that it's also very interesting to see, you know, that as you understood, uh, Bicocca it will be offering all the, the, the special sessions and topics on uh, social innovation because uh, this is certainly a, tra a strand we have while uh, um, Agaelia will be more, you know, Finland will be all more on the green and these environmental uh, related businesses and uh, uh, with, uh, with the other topics on ICT and so will uh, instead uh, be um, FH Yoneu, uh, just to tell you. So thank you very much. So following and the program, and oh, okay, we, uh, because we have here also the streaming and we see a different slide there. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Davide Pozzolu, Pozzolu I'm, I'm Pizzolu, sorry. Uh, I have uh, huge problems in pronouncing. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I know that that T there always creates mistakes. No, but it's funny because I was, uh, yesterday I was uh, in uh, Bulgaria and there you, you have huge difficulties in pronouncing the names and so I'm surprised that I have today in pronouncing the Italian name, but I apologize for that. So please, um, Mr. Pozzolo, Pizzolo, okay. È diventata una gag. Ce l'ha. Sarà abituato. Sì, è una parte che. Potrebbe essere questo. Per me è un problema l'apostrofo. Eh, lui non so. Here we go. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello everybody who is present here and who is coming on streaming. And uh, thank you very much to the professor to invite me here. Um, as, uh, as, as you can see from the presentation, I am the managing director of the company Las Minas Soto Casa. I am not one of the founders. Uh, and this I think is very important to say that when a startup grows, you have to be able to uh, go into some professional management because there is the founder who has a concept and then as correctly professor said you have to learn how to have team members and how to share them so we will i will also focus my presentation on, on some point on the team and how important the team is so i will just like to make a review on exactly who we are and what we do and then uh, if you have any questions on uh, my project and uh, uh, all the partners that we have followed then uh, feel free to ask so can go okay so basically our mission as the founder Francesca Rito said is to improve people and planet's health through the food access digital management uh, this is a very very specific way which I would say to everybody that wants to start a company needs to be very specific in what you want to do so we call it the mission but this is actually the final 
purpose of why a person starts a company. And for our founder, Francesca Dito, this was the main reason of, of, uh, of why. And we go directly to the team. So uh, I put the slides first, even if usually you put it in the end when you go in, uh, in pitching and presentation, because I wanted to show you the importance of who we actually are. So uh, one thing that is very relevant in a company, and I've seen many because I was working for Impact Ad Milano, and I was also collaborating with Fabric before. I was investment manager there, and so I was screening a lot of um, a lot of ideas and, uh, and I've seen a lot of pitches and talking with a lot of entrepreneurs. And the main idea was that the team that was composing the company was the most important part of the company. So you can think that the idea is the re most relevant part of the company, but it is not. You will come with an idea, you will modify the idea, and I'm sure that the course that the professor is launching will really help you with that because as also um, Antonio was saying, uh, some of the, the structure of the course is actually a very long incubation program that we were launching. So I really agree on the fact that it will be very effective. And so you will get into the program, you will change your idea, you will find new people that will uh, help you to modify something. So you will come out with a different concept. But the team that will stay there is what will make the thing happen in the end. So um, I'm going to show you who we are so you can understand how we divided the competencies in our team. So we have Francesco Ardito, which is the founder and the idea guy of the company. He is the PR guy, so he knows everybody. And I say, you need a guy in your company like this. You need to reach someone. Someone goes from the major of a small city in Italy to the minister of agriculture in Italy. He knows them, like, or he knows someone who knows someone. He is the person that perfectly specify, specifies the three degrees of connection inside the country. He knows everybody that knows somebody else. So he is the guy from PR. Then we have Massimo Ivul, which is the second founder of the company, which is exactly the opposite. I don't know how they can be friends, but they are very friends, like they've been friends since the last 20 years. And he is a finance guy. So he has studied accounting. He knows everything about how to launch a company. He has a background, he has founded his own company, and he's also CEO of his company. He's now a 20 million uh, uh, revenues company. And he knows everything about how to actually launch a company and manage it on a financial uh, and administrative point of view. Then they decided that they needed someone which was pretty good in operation, and then they decided to hire me, uh, I, in fact, as a managing director. So I had I have a background, I started in Rocket Internet, I work in the, both in Italy and I work in Thailand for them. Then I went working for Accenture Interactive in a digital sector where I basically launched e-commerce and I was paying, uh, managing all the payment part of e-commerce. Then I went in the Boston Consulting Group, so I worked also in the digital part of the Boston Consulting Group for a while. And then I decided that I wanted my life back. I went out and I went to work for um, Impact Hub uh, as an investment manager. In the Impact Hub, I met this company, which was Das Minus Casa, which was one of the companies that was part of our incubation program. And I decided it was a very good company, and so I made the switch and I joined the company when, when they proposed me. So the idea of why I was there was I had to take what they were doing, which was very, very nice and very, very marketing effective. But on the operational side, they were not so good as they would expect, and so they were looking well. First and most important thing, they realized they were not good in something, and so they looked for a person who could help them on that specific point. I was a nice choice, and so luckily they hired me for that, for that position. The final person is Fabrizio Cardamone, which is our sales director, um, which is the person who relates to all the um, business owners to which we relate with. He also has a pretty specific background. He is now uh, the event manager of Italy, written e Italy, the company of uh, uh, the food stores, like uh, everybody knows, uh, there is one in Milan, in Turin, and uh, uh, like luxury food in, uh, in Italy. And he also has a lot of connection in all the uh, food retail stores era. So he is the guy that, on the commercial point of view, knows who to call, knows how to handle stuff, and knows how to relate with those people. So as you can see, we are four people. Everybody has a specific background, and everybody has a specific era of, of uh, let's say, um, of importance. So nobody goes into the other area because I know nothing about PR, and I know very little of accounting. 
and this is the same for Massimo, who is not a PR person and is not an operational person. So everyone has his specific area in which he is very strong in. And collectively, you have a very good team which is capable to take a company and bring it to the next level. So what do we actually do? So basically, we started realizing that there was four changes happening in the market. So the first one was that there was an attitude change. So people, because of the crisis, were uh, actually trying to spend less, but on the other side, they were trying to enhance the quality of what they were eating. So the like healthy food and all these concepts are starting to get very strong into the market. But on the other side, people and families are trying to lower their expenses. So we realized it was a problem there of these two concepts that they're trying to connect to each other. On the second time, we on the second uh, point, we realized that there was a very strong communication bias between food retail stores and small shop stores, like small food stores, like the butchers or uh, the bakeries, which were not communicating to anyone around them. And on the other side, we had uh, big retail stores, which were just still using like flyers and methodologies, which were actually very old compared to what the people were actually using, which were staying online and all the digital part. So we decided to launch this company. Uh, the third point was a part of cost saving. So as many of you may know, like also the food retail store, big and small, are having a pretty strong pressure of reducing the costs because their margins are lowering down. And so one very good way to enhance the margin without moving the revenues is to cut the cost. So they were trying a way to reduce their cost without reducing the customer base. And the last point, which is always pretty important when you talk about social innovation, is the impact of all the food waste that was thrown away by big retail stores and small retail stores in their all daily activities. And it's incredible when you start studying it, how much is the amount of food that is thrown away. It's like we were doing research, we were also doing something like scouting everywhere, and you can see that there are some retail stores that just take everything that is expiring and they throw outside in the bin. And you open the bin and you have like tons of food there and you're like, what the hell? And so we decided to launch this company. And so this is exactly what we do. So basically we are a company, we are a proximity marketing company, and our idea is to, tour, to, is to turn the food excess into money for retail stores and small retail stores. What we do concretely, we actually have an app which allows the retail stores to send a notification to all the people that are staying nearby uh, with the expiring food that they have. So as you can see in the image, we have on the right the, um, uh, the shop interface in which you just have to write down what he has, the price, initial price, final price, and the discount. And then you have a notification coming to the mobile phone and the smartphone of, uh, of the consumer. Basically, we track what, what is happening. We have a, a concept of where people are located around the shop, so we always know where people are, so we can target them with something that we hope is interesting for them. This, the idea basically is that the small shops that usually have some pretty high quality food are wasting it. So since one is better than zero, for them it's better to sell this food with a strong discount instead of throwing it away. This is quite strange because it's a very complicated concept to explain because the, let's say, the level of managerial skills in these enterprises is very low. So there is much more the concept of, I don't want a discount because if I go too much in discount, then it means I don't have quality. While the perception of the people around is actually the opposite, which is, ah, so you don't want to waste. So if you don't want to waste your food, it means that it is good, which is actually pretty normal. Like if you cook something good at home, you don't want to throw it away. If you, could, if you cook something which is very bad, your main concept when you finish it is, okay, this is left, I will just throw it away. So. We are trying to make some training on this point of view on, and making them understand how important it is to focus on the quality of what they sell. So just a few numbers about our company. So we have around 50,000 users all over in Italy. We have around 1,000 shops, again, all over Italy. And we have one national chain, which we are finalizing the agreement with. So we will start soon with them and uh, which we will have also some big food stores that will uh, be part of our network. And as a last number, we are eight people working at the moment in this company, everyone with specific uh, competencies, customer service, administration, communication, and, and stuff. 
There are just a few data I would like to focus on, which is, for example, something that I suggest you to, to do. Like, whenever you are going to launch a company, uh, just focus on which is the social impact that you have. Because media don't care about business, they care about stories. So you have to find a good way to sell your story. So we were very good, as I was telling you before, Francesco, the founder, is a very good PR. So what he managed to do was to create a whole story behind Las Minas Soto Casa. And this brought us to have 90% of the user that we have, which is 50,000 users, 90% of those users are not paid. So we didn't invest anything in marketing and we had that result. Why? Because we were able to go on uh, mainstream media just because they were very good to tell a story to everyone. So this is our first very astonishing data. The second data is because we are in a trend which is very hot right now, which is all the food waste, food quality, and food everything, our opening rate of notification and emails is extremely high. We have a 24%, which is between 10, 5 and 10% higher than the best of the average of, um, of our service. So go into, my suggestion when I take this number is go into a company, go into a sector where there is a strong hype at the moment, find a good story to sell and sell the story. Don't sell the product because for the media, the story is what important. As I was telling you, this is the media they talked about us. So one thing that I always find astonishing is that when I was in the Impact Hub and trying to focus on the other companies we were, we were incubating and financing, the main problem was giving them coverage because they weren't so good in proposing themselves. So they were always, again, focusing on the product. And even if we were trying to tell them to focus on the story, they weren't really able to tell a story because they were still focusing on, yeah, but I have to tell what I do. And what I love about this company, and it was one of the reasons why I joined the company, was the fact that they were able to tell what they wanted to do in the future. And so, as you can see, we basically ended up in every possible newspaper in Italy, every possible television in Italy. Everyone, at least once, has been speaking about Las Minas Soto Casa, giving us a very, very high visibility all over the network. And this really helped us in saving a lot of money that could have been taken by investors and, put and poured into marketing and just putting them in whatever was most important, which is right now the renewal of our old system. So the last thing is one thing which is important to understand, and I will go back to what I said at the beginning about the idea, is that if you think that your idea is what will make the company, you are completely wrong, like totally wrong. Because I'm telling you, someone else, somewhere, has already had that idea. Probably a few hundred times. So it's not your idea that matters, it's about how you structure, it's about your team, and it's about how you are able to have the right competencies to develop it. Um, so in this slide, what I want to show is, yes, we are here, we are in Italy, but there are other people in Italy and in Europe and all over the world that already had the same idea. So, we have Too Good To Go, which is operating in the Nordics. We have Optimium in France. We have Rescued and Freedom in Italy. We have New Saver. We have a lot of different companies that do something which is almost the same as we do or something very close to what we do, but they actually do it in a different way. But the point is, if you know what you're going to do, don't bother about competition. They can be competitors or they can be partners. It always depends on how, how you want to structure it, but there is someone has already, that has already done what you want to do. Just check why they are not successful enough for you to know them and see which is the part that they are not doing very well and try to go and enter in that part with your idea. So I'm saying that because we have a lot of competition, but we are recognized to be ahead. So we have won basically again here, uh, whatever could be won. Uh, so we won the Impact Prize in, uh, in Madrid, they gave us 100,000 euro. We won the, the Camera de Deputati uh, Prize, they gave us 50,000 euro. The Edison Prize, other 50,000 euros. We won other prizes and one which was given by the President of, uh, of the Republic in person to one of our funders. So the idea is whenever you have a story to tell and a pretty good product, then you can really try to find the right way to present it and recognize recognition will come.
And when you have recognition, then you get into a virtual circle of people talking about you and other people registering and more people registering. You can you get other people talking and you enter into this, I would say, an awesome loop of good things happening uh, that brings you in a in a higher level to the to the to the competition. And that was it. I remember there was another slide, but I took it away. So thank you very much for this energizing presentation. I think there is a lot of food for thought. Uh, but I would like, again, to leave questions at the end, possibly, and uh, then move to our last uh, uh, speaker, uh, Mrs. Poletti. And I try to switch to your presentation in thank the meantime. You. So thank you, everybody. I'm so glad to be here to quickly present you my startup, JustKnock. Um, JustKnock is a digital recruiting platform that wanna change the way people find the, the job they love. So, okay, thank you. So um, I started uh, Just Knock two years ago uh, to s try solving uh, two different uh, problems that I have uh, spotted on the market. Um, the first problem is about uh, young candidates uh, that doesn't have so many experience to show on a CV. So when uh, they are looking for uh, their first job, uh, it's so difficult for them to uh, show the motivation and the, the capabilities uh, they really have for the company they want to work for. On the other side, we have uh, recruiters that uh, receive thousands and thousands of similar CVs. So you can imagine how can be hard also for them to, to screen uh, those data. Uh, so we, we try to find a solution in a different way and uh, the solution for us is to send ideas uh, instead of CVs. Um, okay. So uh, what we do is allowing, as I said, young candidates to uh, propose uh, themselves uh, by sending a project to the company they love. And uh, something very important is that uh, in the first stage, companies will do the, will base the evaluation only on the idea without seeing the identity of the candidate. In this way, we, uh, we also allow companies to be more focused on, uh, on real capabilities and uh, attitudes of, uh, of the candidates. So um, this is some numbers uh, that can help you to really understand how, big, how much big is this problem for companies. Uh, so a company like Nestlé only in Italy uh, receives uh, more than 500 CVs per job application. So, uh, a really high number. And um, other interesting data uh, from the online recruiting market are, for example, that the 94% of uh, recruiters says that uh, they are looking uh, on the social network to discover more about candidates. So they are looking on uh, your profile on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, because they are looking for uh, more information about candidates. Um, then we, we love to, uh, to tell two stories that uh, are really similar on, um, of our model. Uh, the first one is the story of Nina, that is a young girl that really wants to work for Airbnb. So she was really motivated and she sent uh, 50 times her CVs to Airbnb without any answer, of course. So she decides to stand out from, uh, um, from the crowd, she decided to send an idea to Airbnb and she got hired. And uh, it's the same thing for another guy uh, send the 160 times the CV, his CVs for um, GQ. Then he decided to 
compose a magazine with his portfolio and uh, he's got hired too. So from two years ago, we are really proud of uh, our network. A lot of big, uh, big companies decided to join uh, just knock and uh, using this innovative model to hire people and um, we have also a lot of partners and we, we won uh, different awards in uh, HR field and digital and, uh, and innovation so in two years uh, it, it, um, we reach a lot of uh, good goals so we are so proud of that but uh, the things that um, personally makes me happier is uh, when our users uh, tell us uh, uh, that they, they've tried to, uh, to enter in a company send, by sending their CV, so in a classic way, and they get refused. And uh, thanks to Just Knock, they, uh, they are now working in the company they want because they sent an idea and the company was able to, to see uh, the, really, the talent of, uh, of this uh, employee. So that's the reason why each day we, we work with passion on, on this project. Uh, another really important thing of uh, Just Knock is also that uh, uh, all the companies that are looking for talent uh, are respecting also the intellectual property of the ideas. So we want to be really in the middle of these two parts to, to make a meritocratic system. This is our team, is a pink team. <laughs> and uh, as Adder says, uh, the team is uh, uh, really an important part for a startup. And so I started just knock uh, uh, from myself. I'm the founder and the CEO. And, um, but I, I know that each person that join, uh, has joined the Just Knock uh, has something, uh, knows something better than me. So this is an important touch point for, for the success of a project from my point of view. That's it. So thank you. If you have any question, I'm here. Or if you want to write me on uh, LinkedIn, uh, you can add me and uh, I will be there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, before opening the floor to questions, because I'm sure there will be many questions, uh, I would like to uh, basically uh, ask you all uh, uh, something that is, of course, uh, very important from uh, the, my point of view and the point of view of, uh, of our, our program uh, that uh, has to do with, uh, with skills. So I would like to understand, maybe starting from you, just because then your perspective probably is, is more comprehensive since you, you, you had the chance to interact with, uh, with many entrepreneurs. What are the most, the, 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 the skills that were most useful for you to, to, to deal with uh, the different challenges that you, you have to deal with uh, on a daily basis? Uh, I know it's a complex question, but... <laughs> on a daily basis, uh, patience. I, I, would, I, would, I would say there are a set of competences which is one in contrast with the other, which is you have to be persistent and you have to be focused on where you want to go. But on the other side, you have to be patient and you have to listen to other people, which is like two things that looks different, but you really need both of them and try a way to mix them together. Because you would always find some people that tells you, ah, you know, this is very good. Why don't you do this other stuff? And so you have to say, no, I'm, I'm doing this. I will maybe say no to this opportunity because I'm focusing on this, but on the other side you have to get what maybe he meant in that phrase and put it in your business model. So I would say these two parts are the most important part of the, of the business. Thank you. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, of important things to say, but 
I think for me the, the first one is to really strong believe in your vision. Then uh, if you are able to, to share with people uh, why you are doing uh, your startup, I think that is the, the best way to also to reach what you, what you need for your business. Uh, competencies, uh, money, uh, support, media. So um, focus on your passion and don't forget uh, why you are doing what you do. So I think this is the, the most important thing on the, on the way. And from your point of view, I mean, maybe you can provide a double point of view because for, uh, from your point of view, personal point of view, and from what you observe, uh, interacting with so many startuppers. Yeah, uh, well, Mariana and David have stressed a lot on soft skills, let's say, and skills that are really crucial for uh, uh, people who want to be an entrepreneur, like in your experience, especially, especially in, a, in just now experience. I would, all, I would stress, given that I'm giving the point of view of an incubator, on hard skills, competence, uh, it's very important not to leave room for improvisation. Um, of course, you can leave some room for improvisation because, I mean, uh, we have fun with improvisation, we have fun with creativity in our lives, especially in entrepreneurs' life. But uh, from what I've seen uh, out of the tens and tens of startups uh, or business ideas that I've seen, that the one that succeeded had the founders that um, studied a lot, studied a lot, did not have patience, had motivations, had passion, but also studied a lot on how to improve their, their business, on how to uh, be better than their competitors, on how to create a business model that could be viable and uh, um, sustainable. So, um, I would stress on that because I think that, uh, uh, especially in Italy, in the last few years, there is this, uh, um, there is this, there could be this understanding that running a startup is cool and is easy. It's not easy. Uh, it's uh, we call it startup, but uh, it's doing a, a business, and doing a business uh, uh, needs uh, needs motivation, needs patience, but also needs uh, to know uh, the, the set, the tools uh, useful for all the steps necessary from the creation to the management and to the to the to the development i don't want to of course to dis uh, disappoint you with that or to uh, provide a negative uh, view just to stay with the um, feet on the ground and know that uh, it's not impossible at all but uh, it needs some time and some effort Okay, thank you. This, uh, the, the, your final comments reminds me of something that is very important because um, when you make uh, uh, something happen, you can also fail. And uh, very often the success of an entrepreneur is uh, uh, preceded by a relevant number of failures. So I would like to ask you, I mean, I don't know who wants to intervene on that point, what is your relationship with failures? Because I think that it's... Uh, also learning how to fail and how to learn from failures is a, is a skill that uh, an entrepreneur should, uh, should have because, uh, uh, I mean, failures are really around the card and trying and improving continues. I think it's one of the secrets of the final success that you can have. What do you think about this? I, I can start with failure. I'm very good at that. So uh, basically, um, well, when I was in the university, I tried to launch a company uh, which was actually doing something online pretty complicated and I failed. Then I tried to launch another one and then I failed again. And then, uh, well, actually something which is related to her, um, I sent pretty, I mean, I don't want to brag, but like my CV has some pretty big names on it, like Rocket Internet, BCG and stuff. And everyone thinks, oh my God, what did you do to get there? Well, I've sent a lot of CVs, they never answered. And then one day, someone called me from the outside because I knew someone that 
uh, knew what I was doing and they asked him for something that was related with what I was doing and then I got hired by this company. So I absolutely think there is a better need of, of CV screening since it doesn't work. And so I think that the concept of failure is very important. It's like um, one thing that I'm learning and I've, and I've always been learning is I actually do a lot of surfing. Uh, now since I'm Milan I do wake surfing and wakeboarding and all these wake stuff. And you keep falling and falling and falling and getting hurt and you keep falling, but then finally you can stand up and you can finally do the trick you are trying to do since two months and finally you do it. And the second time you fail again, but you did it once. So what I want to stress here is if you are not willing to accept the failure, you will never succeed. And one thing that now switching to when I was working in an incubator, I see in a lot of entrepreneurs is they don't accept the failure. They create what I call zombie startups, which are startups that keep on going on with no purpose, with no money, with ah, if I cut less the cost, then maybe I can go on for another month. Well, that not doing a company. Like you have to accept the fact that maybe you were wrong, maybe somewhere on the road you were wrong. So just close it and start with something else. If you don't want to accept the failure, you will never be a good entrepreneur. You have to accept the fact that you will fail and you will fail again and again and again. I don't know if you have other comments or you, I don't know. No, well, it is difficult to say something after David is, uh, <laughs> David has lessons on failure. I, I would, I would just, uh, I would just say that uh, failure, failure is part of our human being. So it's something that happens either in work uh, and doing a launch a business and the important thing is to uh, learn from failure and this was just something that I wanted to say learning for failure to succeed uh, at the next uh, the next level and then for people who want to be entrepreneurs that have this entrepreneurial spirit uh, I don't have I admit uh, but I've seen a lot um, uh, it's like uh, it's good when they not good when they fail, of course, but when they do another experience and then uh, uh, that is successful even because uh, they learn something from, from that failure. So it's more in the Silicon Valley discourse, this thing of, of the failure in Italy is not that uh, well known. In Impact Hub, for example, they do, David knows they do this um, event called Fuck Up Night, which is a... Uh, uh, an event uh, that was uh, born in Argentina, I guess, for the first time. Yeah, I think in Mexico. Mexico in Mexico, yeah. yeah. That uh, is done in Impact Hub. If you go on their website, they do it, I think, once a month, where they invite uh, people, important people, or just people that have something to say, um, that just tell you about their failure in life. Not a lot of uh, failure, or <laughs> Family failures, but business failures. So it's good to listen to these stories because they are very inspirational. Yeah, just to add to this, I think that uh, thank you that you you brought it up. Uh, I think it's worth to go and, and watch it because what I think is usually here in a, in kind of talks is successful people that tell you how they succeeded, which is awesome, but. Uh, is is always the best part is how they fail and you really hear them say things that you're like you didn't really do that come on everybody knows it's wrong but it's fun to see how everyone starts from scratch and then goes up and becomes people that get admired but they all started in the same way and they all started failing in a very 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 fun ways so um, what I can say from my point of view, just knock is my first job experience. So I'm 27 years old, but uh, I want to say that I'm not afraid to about failure. So I know if something uh, will go wrong, I hope not, but uh, I know that I will learn a lot. So the thing is to be not scared about it. I think this is a, a little secret. I, I don't know about failure yet, but... <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, we we won't be scared about it. 
Okay, no, thank you. I would like to um, specify that we are not training you to fail, but probably we are training you to, to, to have the right attitude toward failures, because I think it's very important to be able to accept and to elaborate on that, to move on, because that's very important. We, we know that there is this word that is used everywhere, this resilience, but probably the idea of, uh, of you know, moving on, and it's very important. Are there questions that you have from the audience? Okay. Is there anybody who has already has a business idea that you want to develop? I'm not asking you to explain now, but <laughs> you? Oh, okay. It's it's something like I hear that I'm trying to develop 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 a kind of really really uh, weird idea. But the point is that I come from biotechnological world in which this concept of entrepreneurship is kind of um, not not accepted, not uh, not present. Okay, so the the hardest part is to understand where which which is the way. And my idea is about creating a bioplastic, a bio wrap that could uh, um, that could. Um, conserve, preserve the, the food for several months with it, without even a fridge or other ways of conserving it. This idea is very fascinating. I think you're in the right place, by the way. No, I mean, it's clear that the ambition that we have in creating these teams is that we are, uh, uh, that people that are applying have different backgrounds. So they have backgrounds like you, because of course you bring your technological background with ideas, probably innovation, I don't know, because I, I've, of course I, I'm not able to evaluate them from a technical point of view, and people with uh, other type of ground that can support you in, uh, in making it happen, you know. So I think it uh, uh, can be an opportunity. Very interesting. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Okay. Um, of course, I cannot ask comments and questions to those of you who are uh, following us uh, on uh, uh, the streaming. Uh, but what I can do is to show you again uh, uh, our contacts uh, so that uh, if you are willing to interact with us, ask anything, post comments on our social media, you are free to do. Uh, so we are available for uh, interviews or contacts uh, or to, to, to answer any question that you, you, you would have uh, in the next days. And of course, uh, I remind you that the deadline for the submission that is online, you find all the details on the, uh, on the web uh, that is um, indicated here are, uh, so the deadline is October 23rd. So thank you for staying here with us tonight. Uh, I would like to thank very much uh, uh, our guests for their stimuli. I think that it's nice to, to see uh, so many young people that are you know, contributing to the development of new ideas and, and also to social innovation. I think it's also very, very interesting. And uh, I hope to see you uh, in our events uh, that we will organize uh, uh, throughout 2018. Okay, bye-bye.